Good morning. Welcome to your UNISA virtual campus. Our virtual campus aims to create a space where students and lecturers can get together and learn collaboratively from one another. Once you have logged onto your My UNISA or My Modules virtual campus, please navigate to your TMS 3708 2023 classroom. This is our classroom for the module Teaching Economic and Management Sciences in the Senior Phase. In this module, we would like to teach you how to teach the content that you have learned in your Economics or Business Studies modules. Let's quickly change my setting to student so that you will see it the same view and we scroll up. So once you've logged into your TMS 3708 classroom, you will land on our welcome message. Please read through the welcome message as it contains very important information that you need to know right from the beginning. I would like to draw your attention once again to the fact that this module makes use of continuous assessment. That means that throughout the year, there are five big assignments that we use to test if you're meeting the outcomes of this module in a continuous fashion throughout the year. There is no examination for this module. Instead, we use five big assignments that all add toward your final mark. There is also no contingency assignment. So if you miss an assignment, you will lose those marks. There is no contingency assignment. So if you miss an assignment, you will lose those marks. I have also in red and highlighted in yellow informed you that we do not accept late submissions for any reason whatsoever. We know that load shedding is a massive problem in the country. You also know that you have a very busy workload when you will be writing exams, when there may be problems that may um, arise in your personal life, things happen. So I'd like to encourage you please to start your assignments as early as possible to ensure that they are submitted by the due date. I will not reopen the portal for any students for any reason. So doing an assignment the night of the due date is not a good idea because you may well run into challenges such as load shedding and connectivity, and I will not accept that as an excuse for late submission of assignments. You have many weeks and many months to complete your assignments in advance. The assignments, as well as each of the learning units, will also be opened in a staggered approach so that we can try and ensure that we have enough time to work through each learning unit and then complete the assignment before moving on to the next. So all of the assignments and learning units will not be opened at the same time. We will open them in a staggered approach to ensure that we work through learning unit one and then complete the assignments. Then after that, only learning unit two and its assignment will open. Please take very careful cognizance of the due dates, write them on your bathroom mirror, add them as reminders to your phone that alert you, you know, a few weeks in advance, but please make sure that you know of each due date and that you clearly understand the assignment portals will not be reopened. Then I'd like to um, highlight my email address. If you have any queries whatsoever, please don't hesitate to contact me regarding the subject content. I will respond within 24 to 48 hours to your email. There is my photo, hello. And then we're going to navigate down to the rest of our classroom, our virtual classroom. And you will see that we have placed the assessments right at the top of the virtual classroom, just because they're so important. The assessments will mean, will be done in a staggered approach. So you'll find your assessment one, two, three, four, and five, right at the top of your virtual classroom. Remember that they won't all be opened right from the beginning, but they will open at different dates to ensure that you first work through the learning units and the content before you complete the assessments. And then you will see the announcements tab. I would like to encourage you to log onto this module site at least twice a week and read the announcements because they will contain important information about this module. The announcements also get sent to your My Life email account.
Next, you'll see the FAQ, the Frequently Asked Questions tab. And this is a very important tab that I'd like to encourage you to log on and read through right from the very beginning. When you click on your FAQ, your Frequently Asked Questions, you will see questions that we get very often that we have addressed in advance in various categories. Category one, there are questions one, two about tutorial letters. Then you can click on category two and you'll see that there are various questions about the study material, the student support services, category three, category four, and so on. Please navigate through all of the categories and read the information that we have placed. One of the most important categories will be your communication and net etiquette, net etiquette or net etiquette. And this instructs you on how to communicate with your lecturer as well as fellow students. Please very carefully read through category seven as well. If you do not send an email or any communication to your fellow students in a professional and courteous manner, I am going to ask you to resend an email or I will delete your post and ask you to retype it in a professional and courteous manner. Then if we go back to our welcome page, you will see that we have gone through our frequently asked questions and then your forums, your forum one has general questions about this module. Please, any questions that you would like to post to your fellow students, you can post in this forum by clicking on add a new discussion topic. And then what you can do is you can copy the subject from above, or you can add in your own subject a question about study material, for example, type your question and post it to the forum. I will log onto the module site once a week or once every two weeks to have a look at the questions and see if I can respond to any of the questions. However, if you have a question and you would like a response quicker, please send it to me via email because I will be checking my emails daily and responding to your emails quickly. When we go back, we'll have a look and under the forum, you will also find a folder for additional resources. Please have a look at this folder, open it, and you will see within this folder, I will post various additional resources that I believe that will be useful to you. I'd like to encourage you, if you have any resources that have no copyright or trademark that you have found useful in the EMS classroom, please send them to me via email and I will gladly add them to this page. What we would like to do is by the end of the year, we would like a folder full of really useful resources, shared lesson plans, for example, PowerPoint presentations, um, tests and worksheets, anything that doesn't have a copyright or a trademark or even something that you created that you would like to share with our fellow peers and fellow EMS teachers, please send to me via email and I would like to add it into our additional resources folder. Please regularly check this folder and if something is useful, please save it to your device so that you can use it in the future for your EMS classroom. It's really great to work collaboratively and share our resources with one another because teaching can often be so busy with so many extracurricular activities that having additional resources to help you in the classroom is really great. Once we navigate back, you'll see that I have also on the welcome page uploaded the CAPS document. This should become our very favorite thing to read as EMS teachers because everything that we have learned in our economics and business studies modules, we will have to apply from the CAPS document and with TMS 3708, we're going to try and learn how to teach what is in the CAPS and how to and create a more inclusive teaching and learning environment in our classroom. Next up, you'll find a glossary, which we're going to fill with difficult words or definitions that we find throughout the learning material. If you come across a phrase or a word and you're not sure what it means, you can pop over to the glossary and see if there is a definition for this word or phrase. If there isn't, please pop me an email and let me know that you've found this phrase challenging or difficult to understand and we can add a definition to our glossary. Again, in our collaborative 
classroom in our collaborative virtual classroom we're going to build a beautiful glossary full of all of our difficult or challenging terminologies and we're going to add to it together to ensure that all of us can learn in the best possible way next you'll find the different tiles for the different learning units and these are so important because remember there is no study guide for this module instead we have replaced the study guide with fully online tiles or lessons learning units so you will start then and each of the learning units will also be opened in a staggered approach so first learning unit one will be opened and we hope that you will work through it systematically then the assignment will be opened and then oh, two weeks three weeks after that learning unit two will be opened and the assignment will be opened we will ensure that all of the assignments are opened several weeks before their due date so when you get to learning unit one or the different learning unit that you're ready to work through please click on it and the contents of that learning unit will open you will then be able to click on your table of contents and you will see what is in this learning unit what is covered in learning unit one for example the introduction we discuss caps and the principles of caps for your ems classroom your role and responsibility as an ems teacher the conclusions and the references we can close it and then we can go have a look at 1.1 our introduction learning outcomes and assessment criteria every time you see something in orange this is a live link that you are able to click on i have tried to create a live link every time i've mentioned the caps document so that it is easily accessible but what I would rather like to encourage you to do is download the CAPS document once and save it to your device so that you don't have to keep downloading it every time you see me refer to it because that could be quite heavy on data. So I have created a live link every time that it's there just for ease of accessibility. But if you've downloaded the CAPS document once and saved it to your device, you don't need to download it every single time we refer to the CAPS document so every time you see something in orange or something that is underlined the little hand will appear you will see that it is a live link that will take you to an internet site if there are videos i have also added in brackets the duration of the video so that you can decide based on the amount of data that you have if you would like to go and view that video this video which is um, you know, more motivational and inspirational, is nearly eight minutes long. I absolutely loved it and it really inspired me as a teacher, so I've included it. And then I will know if I've got enough data to go and watch an eight minute YouTube video or TED Talk video. Once I've worked through my introduction and learning outcomes, I can move on to 1.2, the next section in which we discuss our CAPS document. What I've tried to do next is every time you have a task to complete or I would like you to complete something, I've pasted it in, I've posted it in purple. So every time you see something that is orange, it's a live link, you can click on it. Or if it's underlined and there's a little hand that appears, please click on it and consult it. This will often take you to an external article or video or um, free resource like a worksheet that is very important for you to work through in order to complete this module and then every time you see something in purple you will see that that is an instruction for you to please go and complete something so once we've worked through our caps document we've read and worked through all of the content of this section of the learning unit we can now go and complete the assessment one the quiz and in order to complete assessment one quiz, I will need to read through or consult page three to 10 of the CAPS document. The nature of this module being fully online is that you have access to all of the resources when completing your assignments. Just like in the real classroom, we don't want a closed book exam where you have to remember everything. That's not what the real classroom is like instead we would like our virtual classroom to also reflect a real classroom where i do have access to the internet i do have access to resources and oers and articles that can help me to become a better teacher 
Once I'm done, I can indicate that it's complete. I can move on. So for each of the sections, you will open the tab, read what is in the section, go through the content, and then if there are any videos, you can click on them and watch them, and then complete the assessments or the tasks that are at the end of the video. You'll see when it's in purple, it is something I'm asking you to do. I have created several lessons that I have done as pre-recorded um, slideshows and then there will be one or two Teams live lessons throughout the year but because of the nature of some of our students working full-time and some of them studying full-time I'm also going to do recordings of lessons so that the students can access them at any time. If you have any questions about any of the lessons, you're welcome to post them in the forums or to send me an email. And we can also discuss it collaboratively if I believe that your question is something that the whole group could benefit from or your input is something that the whole group could benefit from. We're going to come back to our virtual classroom and discuss it together. So once you've worked through all of the content of your learning unit, you will see at the end of every learning unit, there is a forum. And this is where our collaborative learning comes in. Please participate in the forums as much as possible. The forums are not graded, but they do help us learn from one another. And they do test if we have met the outcomes of the learning unit above. So if I have a look at forum two, I'm going to open it and I'm going to read the instructions and the question in forum two. I ask you, after studying the sections on content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, pedagogical content knowledge, and technological pedagogical content knowledge, please answer the following questions. Aren't these such amazingly cool new concepts that we're learning about that are going to help us in the classroom? So the first question asks you to analyze the content, analyze the content and discuss how we could practically combine them in our EMS classroom. Please have a look. And then if you're going to participate in the forum, you're going to click on add a new discussion. For the subject, you can copy the subject of the forum, CK, PK, PCK and TPCK. You can copy. You can paste it below or you can add your own subject and then you can type your response to the question number one asked us how can we combine them and then I can write number one and then type my response to this question. And when I am happy with my detailed response to the question at an NQF 7 university level, I can click on post to forum. Once a few students have clicked on post to forum, I'm not going to do it, but once a few students have clicked on post to forum, you will see that a whole bunch of discussions will pop up here. And then I would like to ask you to please take some time and read other students' discussions and also comment on it with your thoughts. And I will be logging in once a week or once every two weeks and doing the same. And we would like to then all again collaboratively learn together. If I think that you have posted something very interesting and I'd like to share my thoughts on it, I can comment on your post. And often, Many of our students have already done their teaching practice or are teachers, student teachers in the classroom and can share really great teaching practice advice, practical advice for what works well in the EMS classroom. And this is the perfect space to do it on. Again, so that we can learn from one another to make us better, the best EMS teachers we can possibly be for our learners. So then if we go back, you'll see that everything that is on your welcome page is also down on the right hand side, pardon me, on the left hand side of your screen. Then you can, when Learning Unit 2 opens, open Learning Unit 2 and navigate through the contents of Learning Unit 2, take part in the discussion forums and complete the assignment. If you go to your FAQs, you will see also under Assessments, Category 5, I have also added in what learning units will be covered in what assessment. So for example, learning uh, assessment one, your quiz, you must work through learning unit one. For assessment two, your written assignment, you must work through learning unit two. 
Assessment 3, you must work through Learning Unit 2 and 3 in order to prepare you for the quiz. Assessment 4, work through Learning Unit 4 and so on in order to prepare you for your various assignments and to ensure that you are aware of the due dates and that you will submit on time. Once again, if you have any queries and also if you have any inputs, please openly share these with me via email or in our virtual classroom using discussion forums or posting under the announcements, commenting on the announcements, so that we create a collaborative place in which we're all going to learn together. And if there's anything you'd like us to address together in a classroom, we can set up a Teams classroom, or we can add extra discussion forums. Please pop me an email and say that you would like to add a discussion forum perhaps for classroom discipline where we could share tips and techniques perhaps we could discuss challenges we found i found many challenges in my first year of teaching in the ems classroom that i would love to discuss and that we can discuss together and you can share ideas on how i could have dealt with those challenges and we can all discuss collaboratively how we're going to be great ems teachers Thank you so much. I look forward to a wonderful year getting to know all of you and working together.